The world's biggest serial killer might never have been caught if he knew how to use a computer. This astonishing story is about Dr. Harold Shipman, who used his clinic not to save lives, but to take them. In a small town in England called Hyde, with a population of only 30,000 people, he carried out serial killings right under everyone's nose for 23 years. After killing more than 250 people, no one suspected Dr. Harold Shipman, and perhaps he would never have been caught if he hadn't made a small mistake. Why did he kill people? How did he remain undetected for so long? And what clue led the police to uncover years of murders in one single moment? Welcome to another video on Tech by World viewers. Dr. Harold Shipman usually targeted patients who lived alone and were elderly, making their deaths less suspicious. He would spend a lot of time with these patients, even visiting their homes, listening to their problems, and easing their burdens, making them feel that, although they were alone, Dr. Shipman was always there to listen. Some patients trusted him so much that they even gave him the keys to their homes. Due to his approach, he became quite famous in Hyde as people thought Dr. Shipman provided extraordinary care for the elderly. But in the guise of this care, Shipman was gathering information on his patients, learning when they were alone, how much wealth and property they had, and about their relatives. Once satisfied, he would give them an overdose of medicine, causing their deaths. Since most of his patients were already over 80 years old, no one found their death suspicious. This continued for many years. Not only was he never caught, but no one even suspected him until he made a mistake. Shipman had started his career in a town called Pontefract, 70 kilometers from Hyde, where he worked at a hospital. In 1974, he left Pontefract and moved to Todmorden, where he took a position as a general practitioner at Abraham Ormerod Medical Center. During his job there, he would prescribe high quantities of a drug called pethidine to some patients. Pethidine is a painkiller, but also a highly addictive drug. Shipman himself was addicted to pethidine and would deliberately prescribe it to his patients, even when it wasn't needed. As a result, patients felt very good after taking the drug, unaware that they were becoming addicted. This led many of them to become attached to Shipman, after being caught for over-prescribing pethidine, the hospital administration fired him, and his medical license was almost cancelled. However, he avoided losing his license and, after spending some time in a rehab center, returned to Hyde in 1977 where he joined Donnybrook Medical Center as a general practitioner. He continued to practice there until 1980, and during this time, neither did he quit his addiction nor did he stop finding opportunities to kill elderly patients. However, his murder frequency increased significantly after 1993 when he opened his own clinic in Hyde and built a strong reputation in the town. For several years, Shipman continued his crimes, with no one suspecting him. The first suspicion arose in March 1998 when Dr. Linda Reynolds, who worked opposite Shipman's clinic at Brook Surgery, expressed concern about the unusually high death rate among Shipman's patients. She noted that in the last three months, 16 of Shipman's patients had died, while Brook Surgery, which had three times the number of patients, had only 14 deaths in the same period. The suspicion deepened when it was discovered that all 16 of Shipman's patients were cremated, not buried, which was unusual, as most Christian families bury their loved ones. Dr. Linda filed a report with the Manchester coroner, mentioning these details and noting that most of Shipman's patients who died were elderly women found dead in their homes. It also seemed suspicious that in many cases, Shipman was either the last person to see the patient alive or found them dead during his visit. Despite an investigation, the police found no concrete evidence against Shipman, and after a month, the investigation was closed. When Shipman's patients died, he would sign the Form B, which is a form that the attending doctor signs, stating the cause of death. However, the issue was that Form C, which another doctor had to sign, was often signed by Shipman's friends or by people who didn't suspect him. This allowed Shipman to forge the death certificates and send the bodies for cremation, leaving no evidence behind. Due to this process, many deaths went uninvestigated and Shipman's crimes remained hidden. After the investigation was closed, Shipman killed three more people. However, his downfall was near. His last victim was an 81-year-old former mayor of Hyde, Kathleen Grundy, who died in her home on June 24, 1998. Once again, Shipman was the last person to see her alive. 
and he signed her death certificate, citing old age as the cause of death. Kathleen's daughter, Angela Woodruff, who was a lawyer, became suspicious when she found her mother's will, which left her house to Dr. Shipman. Angela knew that her mother had two houses, but the will mentioned only one, suggesting that someone unaware of the second house had written it, likely Dr. Shipman himself. Angela went to the police who reopened the investigation. Kathleen Grundy's body was exhumed and sent for an autopsy, which revealed high traces of diamorphine, heroin, in her body. When police questioned Shipman, he claimed that Grundy was a heroin addict, and he had documented this in her medical records. However, Shipman had recently started entering medical records into a computerized system and didn't realize that the system automatically saved the last edit date. The police found that Shipman had entered the note about Grundy's heroin use after her death. This discovery led to Shipman's arrest on September 7, 1998. Further investigation revealed a pattern in 15 other cases where patients had been given lethal doses of diamorphine and Shipman had forged death certificates, citing old age as the cause. Many of these patients were cremated, erasing the evidence. However, during the inquiry, several bodies were exhumed, and it was confirmed that Shipman had killed at least 218 patients, though the actual number might have been as high as 260. In January 2000, Shipman was convicted of 15 murders and sentenced to life in prison. In 2004, he committed suicide in his cell. Though some believe he may have killed more than 500 people, the exact motive behind his killing spree remains unknown. Some speculate that it was related to his mother's death from cancer, as she was given morphine to ease her pain, leading Shipman to watch his patients die in a similar manner. The chilling legacy of Dr. Harold Shipman left an indelible mark on the medical community and the families of his countless victims. Following his conviction, the healthcare system underwent significant reforms aimed at preventing such atrocities in the future. The introduction of stricter regulations for death certification and the establishment of more rigorous checks and balances were direct responses to Shipman's heinous acts.